So a life of uh, compassion is always going to be a meaningful life. If you have compassion, you may not have as much money, or you may. You may not have a lot of uh, amenities, or you may. But you will have one thing, for sure. And that one thing is peace. You will not struggle to sleep. Most people keep tossing and turning in their beds every night, day in, day out. One of the most basic activity is to sleep and they struggle with just sleeping. Because there is so much going on. Mind is constantly racing in a billion different directions. And that's because you have kept yourself so busy thinking about things that are absolutely irrelevant. And the funny thing is, most of the time, you're not thinking about future plans. You're thinking about other people. And mind has a natural tendency to gravitate towards negativity. If you sit in solitude, the first set of thoughts that will come to you will be negative thoughts. And you will recall all the bad moments. You will recall all the painful moments you've been through in your life. And that will trigger a whole set of negative emotions in you. And you might start to think bad about the other person that he or she did that to me, I deserved better. And that, that's the funny part. They're not even aware. They don't even know you are thinking about them. They don't even know you are, you know, even maybe swearing at them. They're not aware. But you are causing yourself much, much, much greater damage, which is totally unnecessary. It's much better to pick up the phone and, and call the person and say, well, you know, this is what I'm thinking. I think you need to listen to me. <laughs> or maybe just call a telephone company and, you know, Say, today you have to listen to me, I listen to you all the time. <laughs> you know how telemarketing calls come and they make you listen to them. One day you call your company and say, look, I have nobody to talk to, I would like to you to hear me out. <laughs> it's basically, don't keep it in you, that's what I mean. Either don't ponder over it, because anything you hold in your mind for long enough will manifest in your life. Good or bad, both. It's harder to hold positive things and that's why most people struggle with manifesting positive things in their lives and this leads me to the third point how to be happy being happy in itself is the third action in the path to happiness happiness is a commitment it's not dependent on what you have and you haven't it's simply I am determined to be happy this universe is uh, trillions of years old, maybe more than that, gazillions. This galaxy of ours is billions of years old. This planet is millions of years old. There are many, many species just as many millions of, year, millions of years old. In all these trillions, billions, millions and hundreds and thousands of years, the average lifespan of a human being is probably 70, 80, 85, 90, somewhere along around that and I have realized that the most foolish thing to do is to let this life slip by your hands it should be lived because we don't know about the next life yes I believe in rebirth because there is a yogic way of going back into your past life but I'm saying you shouldn't believe what I believe in you should believe what you believe in Imagine there is no rebirth. Imagine this is all there is. So what you do, if living this life is a good thing. Otherwise, whole life, chinta premyam chapraliyantam upashrita, till one's last breath, one is full of care and worries. I wish this, was ha this happened in my life. Well, whatever happened, happened. You tell me, what do you want to do now? with what you have now in your hands, this moment. We can't undo what happened, good or bad, right or wrong. It's, it's done. Even if that person were to come and apologize, it may heal you to some degree, but it won't really fix your problem, will it? It can't undo the scar. So 
you have a choice. You want to live in your past or do you want to live in your present? Or you want to keep worrying about the future? Bad stuff will continue to happen. Bad people, you know, uh, inconsiderate people will always surround you. Because chances are maybe you were also in, in, inconsiderate to somebody else once. Maybe not as much. But nevertheless, this, the sum total of all karma remains the same. Um, I'm reminded of a little story I wrote on my blog a long time ago. There was a rich man, he went to a little village and he had to stay the night there, but he was you know, in a fix whether to drive all the way back, back or stay. There was only one hotel, uh, a motel kind of thing in that village. So he goes there and he says, do you have a room? And the hotel manager says, well, we do. And he said, how much is it? It's $200. And he said, I'd like to see the room first. The manager says, sure, you can see the room, but you have to give a deposit of $100 to see the room. If you don't like it, we give you the $100 back. He says, sure, no problem. He takes a $100 bill, puts on the table, and the manager calls the bellboy and says, you know, please take him to the top floor and show him our room. So he goes, the manager goes running to the next door grocery store because he owed the grocery owner, uh, the, shop, uh, the shop owner, $100. He said, well, I owed you $100, so here's your $100 bill. Now I don't owe you anything. The grocery the shopkeeper said, yes, we are even. But the shopkeeper owed a farmer $100 because he had gone, gotten some stuff from him. He goes running to the farmer and says, well, here's your $100. It, it's been weighing on my head for, for many, many months now. I'm so glad to be debt free. Now I don't owe you anything. And the farmer said, yeah, well, it's all settled. You don't owe me anything. The farmer owed a cop $100. I don't know for what service, but he did. <laughs> so the cop was just next to him. He happened to be sitting there. So he said to the cop, well, here's your $100. I don't owe you anything now. And the cop said, well, fine, that's right. You don't owe me anything and I'm happy to get my hundred dollars back. The cop owed a prostitute hundred dollars. So he runs to the prostitute and says, well, here's your hundred dollars. Um, I'm sorry it took me many months. And she says, well, thank you. You're a good client. And she takes hundred dollars and she owed the hotel hundred dollars. She goes to the hotel manager. She said, well, I owe you hundred dollars. Here's your hundred bucks. So I don't owe you anything now. And the manager says, well, that's true. You don't owe me anything now. In the meantime, this rich man comes down and says, well, you know what, I, I'm going to pass. I didn't like the room. I think I'll drive back. He said, no problem, here's your $100. And he gives the 100 bucks back and um, the man drives off and everybody becomes debt free in that village. <laughs> even, though, <laughs> even though nothing really happened, <laughs> nobody gained and nobody lost. But everybody became debt free suddenly. Everybody slept really well. I don't owe anybody anything. The karmic transactions work exactly like that, like that scene in this village. The sum total is zero. The balance sheet always matches at the end of the year. So all these things that we think people are doing to us, most of the time it's complete nonsense because nobody is doing anything to you and nobody can do anything to you in fact and even if you look at it spiritually you're not just the body if you if your truth was the body alone the body will never decompose something is in the body that leaves and the doctors say well this person's dead you know, we say if somebody's ex, you know, this person ex is dead, bury him or burn him or cremate him or whatever. But you're not really just the body. But this identification with the body, that I am the body, I'm the body, I'm the body, makes you feel you're the body. So anything body goes through any problem, we think, oh, it's a big problem. Because everything we experience is through the body. Imagine you were to step into somebody else's body for a moment. Will you be able to clean up after that person, wash them up, you know, brush their teeth? How will you feel? You feel gross. But we don't feel that with our own body. That's how strong this 
self-identification is. So if you took a moment to reflect, who am I? Really, what is my truth? What is the basis of my existence? And what do I stand for? What am I doing on this planet? And all the things I'm giving importance to, do they even matter? Do they even matter at all? Everything that I've, I've held on to, to cripple myself, is there any sense to it? And 90% of these feelings, these emotions go away when you make a conscious commitment to compassion. When you say, well, this is how I am going to lead my life.